The inclusive sport we're going to look at today is a game called Boccia. Boccia is a Paralympic sport. It's played at the, at the elite level, it's a Paralympic sport, but anyone can play Boccia. Um, you have to be sitting down when you play Boccia, so that's one of the unique features of the game. It's, uh, it's pronounced Boccia, sounds like gotcha, but it's spelt B-O-C-C-I-A. So if you're looking that up on the computer, it's spelt B-O-C-C-I-A, Boccia, sounds like gotcha. Boccia, as I've already said, is a game you play sitting down. Um, it's a game that's called a, a target sport. It's, it's classification as a target sport. It's a ball game, and there are 13 balls in a boccia set. So I've got a boccia set here, uh, just down by my side. In a boccia set, there are six blue balls, six red balls, and a white ball, which is the jack. Boccia balls are quite heavy. They're quite dense. Uh, they're not bouncy balls, they're not like tennis balls, they look about the size of a tennis ball, a little bit bigger, but when you drop them, they tend, they're tend quite dead and dull, so they're a bit like uh, hacky sack type balls. Um, the game is played, one of the beauties of Boccia is you can play in a variety of spaces, different size of space. So you can see we've got quite a small space here, but we're going to do a little demonstration of the game. But a full boccia court is around about the size of a badminton court, just a little bit smaller than a badminton court. So um, one of the beauties for us in active lives of boccia as a sport that we play in the community is you can play in lots of different situations with lots of different, some different amounts of space. The aim of the game in boccia is for the two teams to try and get their balls closer to the white ball, the jack, than the other team. Uh, and we'll, we'll do a demonstration game in a moment and you'll see how that works. One of the features about Boccia is you can send the ball towards the jack pretty much any way you like, as long as you're sitting down when you do it. So I just wanted to go through some of the shots that you would often see in a Boccia game. So one of the shots you play, or a lot of players would play, would be what's called a dart shot. So that's when the player holds the ball like you might, or similar, in a similar way to how you might hold a dart, and then they fire the ball in towards the jack. Another type of shot in boccia is a shot where you just hold it, the ball a little bit like a, te a tennis ball and throw it underarm up in the air to try and get the ball close to the jack. Another uh, shot that uh, you would often see in boccia is a rolling shot or a bowling shot. Um, players new to the game would often think that yeah, they have to bowl the ball, you don't have to bowl the ball in boccia, but this is one of the ways you can try and get your ball close to the jack. And a fourth type of shot, there are others as well, but a fourth type of shot that we're going to look at today is uh, a pitching shot uh, where you put some spin on the ball. So that's where I've got the ball in my hand, I've turned my hand over and then I throw the ball up in the air and put a little bit of backspin on the ball. So there are four different types of shots, there are others as well, but four different types of shot that you can use in the game of boccia. So in this first game, we're going to, um, I'm going to play a game as if I was playing for both sides, so I'm going to play the red and the blue ball, so it's just a demonstration game, but it just gives us an opportunity in this small space to show how a, a game is played, and it also gives me a chance to identify one or two of the tactics and the rules as we go through. So it's the first end, and that means in the first end it's always, or it should always be red to go first. So I'm gonna play a red ball to start the game. There we go. The aim of the game is to try and get as close as possible to the white ball. So the blue team are now gonna play their first shot. The blue is closest to the jack there, you can see that clearly. So it's red that's going to play the next shot. And although the red's got close to the jack, the blue is still closer. So it's red that will have to play again. There's another red ball. Okay, just have a little look at that. It looks to me like the, just from here, the blue is closest to that ball. Let's just have a little look there. Yeah, the blue's closest to that jack. So the red will have to play again, a fourth ball. 
I can't move my chair, by the way. The players aren't allowed to move their chairs during the game. So I'm going to nudge that red up yeah, a little bit closer to the jack. So now the red is closest to the white ball. So it's blue now that we'll have to play the next shot. You can see it's a bit tricky that the white ball is starting to get a little bit protected and shielded from the players. So it's a bit tricky to get in. Blues are going to have to keep on playing. And you can see what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to come around the side there and knock that blue closer. Let's just have a little look there. Oh, yes, managed to do that. That blue is now closer to the jack than the red. So it's red that we'll have to play the next shot. So this is a tight end here, lots of balls close to the jack. I can't get into the jack from where I am, but I could try and nudge that red ball a little bit closer, a little bit like a cannon shot in snooker. Let's just see. No, that hasn't worked. Not close enough. There's only one red ball left now. So I need to hit those reds in if I can. Mm. A little look there. That blue's still closest. Reds are all played. There's three blues left. So blues would have a choice now. They could either forfeit these three balls and take the one point that they've got on the floor there, or they could keep going, stop whenever they like, and see if they can add to their points total. I think we're going to add, try and add to our points total. Uh, we might regret it. The blues might regret carrying on. Red is clearly closest now, but I wonder, nah, that's better, last ball to play, just nudge that blue up, there we go, and it looks like now, that's the end of the play now, with no balls left, all the reds have played, all the blues have played, so we're just going to go up to the head now and see what the score is in this particular game. Okay, what we're trying to do now is just decide what the score is here in this game. So we can see we've got the closest ball to the jack, I think is fairly clearly this one here. So that's one to the blue. So we'll take that one out. Now we're looking for the closest, having taken that ball out. And I think it's fairly clearly, just got a little measuring stick here, some calipers. Yes, yeah, clearly that blue is the second closest. And then the closest balls now are all red. So the score in that game was two to the blue and zero to reds. The two closest balls to the jack were both blue and the next closest ball was a red. So it's two to blue, zero to red. Okay, so we've played what's called an end in Boccia. That's one game where everyone, all the players have played all of their balls. So all 13 balls have been played. The score in that game, I think, was two to blue, zero to red. And what would happen now in the next game is, because it's the second game, the second end, blue would go first in the second game. And we'd play, that, play another game in a similar sort of format. And we could play up to a certain number of games or a, play for a certain amount of time. That's Boccia. Um, I hope... I'm sorry, it's a small space and there's only me playing, but I hope you've seen, got a bit of a feel for how the game's played, some of the rules in the game and how the scoring is done at the end of the game. It's a very inclusive sport. Uh, it's one of the inclusive sports that we play with Active Lives.